I'm all like this, eh? <laughs> As I declare you so, Rufai and Ruben Abati, or the, or the Arise crew, they don't boss as they get this money. Oh, yes, now. Nah. <laughs> I don't say yes, the nine week, carry some leaders from uh, River State, go see on a press do for us. So, rock. so uh, and they call talk one or two concerning Nigeria, Nigeria be, which they make Nigeria be poor country, Nigeria be a poor country, blah, 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 and all those kind of things. They analyze that matter. They see Chuk Mart inside this uh, in local Chicago State University uh, court case, we get with the article. We say the school now. We say the document also say the certificate we the Baba carry is different from the one they, they give for their school. Anyway, we go watch the video now. We are here the full analysis. And remember to talk to Kenti so make better sense for inside this video. We to watch the video. Line story for this morning. Fine. Hmm. Okay, so the president in the news, number one, yes, like he said, as regards uh, the delegation that came from River State, we have no reason to be poor. But we are poor, and he's going to do everything to fight it. The reason why we are poor, we know it's because of leadership. Successive Nigerian leaders have made this country poor. They've deliberately impoverished the poor because of their level of corruption. And that's what puts put our country the way it is today. So President Tinubu had better try as much as possible to be able to solve the problem. Because one of the things that make us poor is the mountain debt, for instance. Today, now, they said our debt have increased up to $87 trillion increase 75% more in the space of three months. That means we are still taking a lot of debts. And when you take so much debt, there's nothing that can be done. Two weeks after sharing the palliative, life is still hard for a lot of Nigerians. These are the things that make Nigeria poor. Massive corruption, crude oil theft, and the list goes on. Concerning the certificate, I think a lot of people should come out clean. And the university and the institution should come out clean. Why is all of this happening? The certificates he presented to INEC is different from the one a lawyer in Nahoro Eba got from CSU. And they filed a case as regards that I never saw the light of day. There were discrepancies as regards what the same Chicago State University gave in Nahoro Eba, a lawyer, and what the president filed in his INEC form. We should not have a country where we're having discrepancies and certificates of leaders. We should not have a country. It makes mockery of our country. So it is based on that at Tiku Abu Bakr. And that's why the subpoena is clear in a Vanguard News report last year. And the documents are public source. All the records that CSU gave. And it's based on that that Tiku Abu Bakr is going to court. So there have been a lot of back and forth in court as, the, as regards the case. But CSU is not also willing to authenticate this same certificate that they gave out. They can also authenticate their own certificate. So it's a blight on CSU. So no matter how much CSU tries to go and contact CBS and issue a report, the question we should ask them is why can't they authenticate the certificate they gave out? Because if you give out an authenticate certificate, you should be able to authenticate it as the body that issued the certificate. And also, why are they discrepancy who, who signs the certificates? A man that just came in 1998 signed a certificate that was issued in 1979. And that's why when Mr. Duro Jaye came out to say he went to school, we would like to have the man on the table here because we would like to ask critical questions about his time in school. And it's not today we had cases against the president. As regards certificate issue, that's back over 20 years ago. Even the primary school he went to and the secondary school he went to are still things we should ask for. You remember the conundrum of GCI? You remember also St. Paul School, our lawyer? So there are many questions and there needs to be clarity on the primary school he went to, the secondary school and the university. You know, because so that people have a right to be able to know. I remember when, what is it called? Uh, I think it was one of Nigeria's president. Was it uh, uh, President Yaradua or somebody? They were doing a documentary on him and they traced the documentary to where he served at Holy Child School. Dr. Abati also reminds, I think it was Good Luck Jonathan. They did a documentary and they discovered that he was teacher at, he served in maybe around Osho State or somewhere. NYC. NYC in Osho State. So these are the documents we need to keep asking. Also ask things about, okay, where, where did he do his primary school? Where did he do his secondary school? And this university issue, 
So these are pertinent issues that need to, and the fact that CSU cannot authenticate the certificate, these are the questions, are pertinent questions we need to ask because of our national, you know, knowledge base and sovereignty. Okay, may I put it like this? The issue about uh, President uh, Tinumbu's academic qualification is of no moment. It's not an issue. The people who have been digging into it since uh, 1999 when he became uh, governor of Lagos State, they're just wasting time. Section 131 sub D of uh, the 1999 constitution says, for you to be president of Nigeria, you will have qualification of school sat. At least, that section says, at least a school certificate qualification or is equivalent. <laughs> now, that one that says uh, at least means that, in fact, you are not required to mm. even complete secondary school. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you could be F9 parallel, as many people who have led Nigeria came out uh, with F9 parallel. So you don't need, we are not in a country where your education does not matter. So all of us, because we carry degrees, we wore academic gowns here and there, we think that the people should know Nigeria should be educated people. No, the constitution of Nigeria does not say so. Mm. And that's why we had that issue about school sat with uh, President uh, uh, Buhari. No, he didn't need to have a school sat. Even in the constitution, the interpretation of that section 131 says that, look, if you attended uh, one or two seminars and you can prove that you attended one uh, roadside uh, uh, seminar uh, where an MC was pre uh, present and you were given a certificate of attendance, you can be anything in Nigeria. That's the level where we are. So uh, all this controversy, whether he went to Chicago State University, he didn't go to Chicago State uh, University, it's of no moment. Really, President Tinubu does not even need to go to any university to be president of Nigeria. He does not need to even go to secondary school. Do you know that in the interpretation section of the Constitution, it is even said with regard to section 131 that if you can just prove that you can speak English, mm. you can be president of Nigeria. <laughs> it even says that INEC on its own can determine on its own who can be president of Nigeria. So that's why I say it's, it's of no issue and nothing is going to come out of it. The people who are pursuing uh, whether Tinubu attended the uh, Chicago State University or not, yeah, they may be pushing the point along the lines of perjury because if you claim something, then you must prove it, okay? But the truth of the matter is that what uh, we have been told now is that he attended the university. So even that perjury claim has fallen flat. And people have been on it since uh, uh, 1999. Uh, Tinubu did not go to university. Uh, he went to university. What we need to worry about is the quality of the education of the people who will lead Nigeria. I said yesterday on this same program, that there are people in this uh, country who have like three master's degrees, perpetual students. There are people who have double PhDs. Why is it that those ones are not good enough to lead Nigeria? Even if they are not naturally gifted, but at least you will know that this one has a brain. If you surround him with the right people, his brain will wake up, which is a double PhD, is a triple master's, and all of that. So why are we running a country with, uh, you know, uh, Division Three people. They don't do that in Japan. They don't do that in China. If you look at the cabinet in uh, China, despite the fight between uh, America the, and, uh, and uh, China, most of their big men, they are from uh, top schools from the United States. The same with Japan. They don't run country with imbeciles. With Division Three people, you don't run a country like that. But Division Three is good. If, if you go to also. Bangladesh, the civil service is one of the most competent in the world, because you don't run your country with imbeciles. 
You run your country with intelligent people. The second point, uh, President Tinubu is saying we are very gifted people, we are not lazy people, and all that excellent rhetoric. He spoke well. And of course, in terms of the details, he was visited by about 60 something people from uh, River State, from APC, from PDP. And at that occasion, uh, week again, stole the limelight because he got commended by the president. The president called him, he's my admirer, he's my advisor, and all that. So I, I, I guess, you know, people will learn from this that uh, uh, some Wiki is not uh, what some people think he is. He's very smart politically. And he just uh, he did the game of one up there. He brought all the beaded uh, chiefs from uh, River State to come and pay homage to the president, to come and stage a drama of psychophancy. And he himself got praised uh, in the process as an advisor, as a man who is in charge. And the president even gave him an assignment about what he can do. So, you know, when you are looking for smart politicians, I think here's some wicked. He's actually smart. You know, I will not underrate him, but when he, he talks out of turn, we will call him to order. But he's been playing a very smart game. He's become more or less the most prominent minister in this cabinet, and the president is very happy with him. And when you work for a president and the president is happy with you, you will go a long way. But in any case, I think it's important that President Tinubu has reminded all of us that we are not lazy people, that we are serious-minded people in this country. What Nigerians are just asking for is how can we, under President Tinubu, turn that energy into productivity, into progress, into uh, achievement, okay? So unlike his predecessor, he has acknowledged that uh, we have no reason to be poor, but he also has a responsibility to introduce policies, not wrong-headed policies that will get Nigeria declassified, reclassified by uh, rating agencies and put us in more trouble. Yeah. So that's his job. He has his job cut out for him. So even as he goes all over and he says, I'm the chief salesman, I'm this and that, that's fine. Nobody has ever questioned that. But he has to do the job. That's why he's there. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. He's trying. He's trying. He's trying. You know, but when we criticize him also, he should tell his uh, attack dogs to be respectful of public opinion, which is a major aspect of the public governance uh, process. There's a whole book on public opinion. I've, I, I don't immediately remember the name of the author. The public opinion plays a part in governance. Maybe I will Google, I will, I will try to look for the book. You know, maybe that's a book that uh, President Tinubu and his uh, aides should read about the importance of public opinion. Right, okay, so just a few minutes. Um, first of all, with regards to the president saying that Nigeria has no business being poor, um, alongside River State, which was very well represented. And I hope that the people of Rivers have seen the faces of those who have gone to sit to the president so that when they come back, they'll ask, what did you bring back for us? It's not just to sit and, you know, uh, talk and praise this administration, but also to go there to represent the interests of the people, which I believe must have been top on the agenda of that particular meeting. But um, in terms of that, very, in, um, ve very important statement is made, and we must say that the president has said the right things in many ways. But we're at a point where we don't want to hear just the right things anymore. He is the president. And since he's identified that Nigeria has no business being poor, then we hope to see that play out in the reality of Nigeria. And as been, has been asked, why are we poor then if we have no reason to be poor? We have the natural resources. We have the people whom the president himself has said are not lazy. They are resourceful. In fact, the people of Nigeria are said to be one of our greatest assets, human resources. So why are the people poor? Why are people still earning 30,000 naira as minimum wage at federal level? Why are people unable to afford three square meals? In fact, that's taking it too far. One meal a day comfortably. 
Why are people doing anything to survive? Why has the rate of crime increased, as noted by the BOT of the PDP, who have said, actually, that Nigerians are poorer and are suffering under the very harsh conditions in the last, you know, administration and now into this administration, um, early days, things haven't seemed to have improved considerably. The, minute, the president has said the right things. During his campaign, he was very emphatic about the fight against poverty. In fact, the Ministry for Humanitarian Affairs has now been termed as for poverty alleviation as well. So what we want to see beyond the right sound, um, you know, great sound bites is action. We want to see policies. We want to see the fact that people's lot are bettered under this particular administration. And not just for a select few, but for everyone. And, and you know, one of the things the president said again is, oh, let the young people be patient with me. Nigerians are one of the most patient set of people, I dare say, in the world. We have been patient with successful government. It is now time for the um, government to be kind to its people, to be good to its people, to create policies and make life easy and bearable for the Nigerian people. So in terms of policies so far, the president still hasn't given concrete attention to um, palliatives and especially to cushion the effect of the subsidy removal. Engage with the labor, organized labor. Talk about the revision of wages for federal, um, federal civil servants. It's very key. Uh, the, the prices keep going up and yet wages remain the same, overriding inflation. How will people survive on that note? We talk about the um, social um, register. Has that been updated? Have they corrected the you know, the, the discrepancies on that register. What is the plan for the distribution of conditional cash transfer? What happened to the $800 million loan from the World Bank? These are the issues. It's not just about talking. Let us see that poverty alleviation is top burner for this government with immediate action, not just positioning ourselves and putting our best foot forward on the international stage. It's good to position Nigeria rightly outside, but if the people in are suffering, then no matter how much we make the optics look great on the outside, in the outside world, it will not work. And then finally, with regards to the certificate issue, yes, I do agree that we have to fix the conditions or perhaps the criteria to electing our, um, our leaders. In fact, in the 2014 National Conference, a proposal to make the president have a first degree was, um, was voted out, was voted down. Beyond that, it's also a matter of integrity. If the president says he went, he didn't have to present a certificate from CSU, but the moment he said he went to CSU and he presented that certificate, the onus is on him to defend that certificate. And that's quite a challenge. What do we say to girls like Mesome Ejikeme, who forged um, her jam results and the whole, I mean, Nigeria went, uh, there was a lot of noise. What should we say to her? Perhaps we should tell her to bide her time in the future. She can only just find a way, make a way, and later on she'll be okay. What do we tell young people to be, as, you know, to be aspirational if we're saying that we shouldn't really look at this? We have to investigate this matter for the integrity of the president, for the integrity of our nation, that we may not.